and faith family and friends. Oh, let's do that again. Good morning, faith family and friends. Amen. God is so good and he is worthy to be praised. Can we just celebrate Jesus on today? Amen. For those of us who are online, if you can like and share uh, the stream, in invite somebody to worship with you, even virtually. Amen. Go ahead and post in the comment, uh, comments, um, where are you watching from and where are you worshiping from uh, so that we can know that you're here. Amen. Amen. Let's stand all around the house, all around the building as we read God's word and get into uh, just glorifying his name on today. Amen. Today, uh, our scripture is coming from Ephesians, the fourth chapter, verses one through six. And it reads as follows. Therefore, I, the prisoner in the Lord, urge you to live worthy of the calling you have received. With all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. I love this part. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope at your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is above all and through all and in all. Woo! Amen. God is good and he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for being our one Lord, our one God, Lord, that you have called us to a place of oneness, God, in you. Lord, there's nobody greater than you. There's nothing uh, stronger that can overwhelm or consume you, God. So we're praying that you consume us, Lord. Consume us, God, so that we can move forward in who you've called us to be, proclaiming your name, proclaiming your greatness, proclaiming that you are King of kings and you are Lord of lords, to stand together in unity, one faith, one baptism, one Lord who is above all and through all. Lord, you are everything. God, you are worthy to be celebrated. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy of all the honor and the glory. So God, we give that to you on today. We give you our whole hearts. God, we give you our unrestricted praise to say, Lord, you have your way. God, that we will walk in the oneness and the unity that you called us to. God, you told us to just go and tell other people about you. So God, empower us, strengthen us to, to share your goodness, Lord, how great it is just to get excited and hear your word. Lord, let us take that same excitement and fervency to proclaim it all throughout the nations. Lord God, we pray for our pastor. We pray for all those who are physically in the building and even those who are watching online. God, we pray for those who are sick and who may have ailments in their bodies. Lord God, I call out Stephen Jones right now, Lord. Lord God, you know what he's gone through and the, and the challenges and complications that he had and the scary moments that he's had uh, on today, God. But you are our big God. You are our healer. You are our way maker, our miracle worker. God, you can do all things, Lord. So God, we're calling on your name. We're calling on your great name, Lord, to heal, to deliver, to set free, God. Lord, those within the body who are not feeling well, God, we ask that you encourage their hearts, God, that you strengthen them and their families, Lord. Lord God, we know that you are sovereign and you do all things and it's according to your work and your will. Even when we're not well, God, you're still in the midst. So God, let us remember that you are faithful and you are true and that you never leave us. God, let us be encouraged. It's in Jesus' name that we do pray and we say amen. Amen. God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Let's give our praise. Hallelujah. God, you are worthy. 
Hallelujah. We won't stop proclaiming your name. Hallelujah. We won't stop proclaiming the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For you are worthy, God. Hallelujah. You are great. You are amazing. Can you all do me a favor? Just say Jesus. Jesus. Say it again. Say Jesus. Jesus. Say it one more time. Jesus. Jesus. For there is power in your name. Hallelujah. There is strength in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So all over the building, even if you're watching virtually, can you just join with us to say, we love to call your name is something we cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name your great name you say we love to oh, call your name it's something we cannot explain we cannot explain that happens, that happens when we proclaim, when we proclaim your great name your great name your great name, your great name. Call name. King Jesus King Jesus no other name no other King name. Jesus King Jesus nobody strong None stronger. We can call on you. Call on things change. Yes. Things change. Yes, when we call on your name. Oh, say it again, King Jesus. King Jesus. No other name. No other. King name. Jesus. King Jesus. There's nobody stronger. None stronger. We can call on. Since something happened. Things change. Yes, when we call on your name. This is where my hope lies. Power in the name of Jesus. Yes. Power in the name. Can you all get excited about that? So there is power in the name of Jesus. Power in your name. Oh, so there is power. There is power in the name of Jesus. So much power in. Power in your name. Of Jesus. So much power. power this in is your what name. happens. Things change when I call you. Things change when I call you Jesus. Things change when I call you. Things change when I call your name. It doesn't stay the same. Things change when I call you Jesus. Something miraculous Things happens. change when I call you Jesus. Call your name. Sit when I call your name. When I call your name. Sit when I call your name. When I call your name. Sit when I call your name. When I call your name. Sit when I call your name. When I call your name. I feel much better when I walk. When I call your name. I feel my strength coming when I call your name.
Hallelujah, Jesus. Everything that we need is in you, O oh God. Hallelujah. So we lift our hands, O oh God, as we proclaim you as our, our way maker, our promise keeper. O oh God, all that we need is in you, God. We're so grateful and honored to be able to serve you, O oh God. Hallelujah. To live for such an awesome God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we worship you today, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in place I worship you I worship you help me say you are here moving moving in on me so we worship I worship you yes Lord we worship I you worship hallelujah you. God you are here you are here you're working Work Oh God, we worship you. I worship you. Lord, we worship, I worship you. Oh, you're our way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Yeah, you're my way maker miracle worker promise keep light in the darkness my god that is who you are you are here turning lives around i worship you i worship you you are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship. I worship you. I worship. I worship. Even when I don't see it, you're working. 
Even when I don't yeah. feel it to work and you never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Can you help me say even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't even feel it, when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop, you never stop, you never working. stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when, even when I don't see it's your oh God, you're faithful Even and you're when true. I don't feel it, you work you never it. Stop. You never stop, you never stop hey, you never win. You never stop, you never stop Even working. when I don't see it. Even when I don't see it, you work it. Even when I don't feel it. Even when I don't feel it, I'll you work it. You never stop, you never stop you working. Never stop working. You never stop, you never stop Close your mind. You're my light in darkness. Oh, that's who you are. Lift your voice and say, way maker. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. One more time, say, you're my way maker. Way maker, miracle worker. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who, that's who you, are. you are. Hallelujah, that's who you are. You're my way maker, you're my light in the darkness. Oh, that's who you are. That's who you are. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's who you that's who you are, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Let's celebrate God today for being our way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper is who he is, light over darkness. What a mighty God we serve. Y'all, can, can, let, let, let's just do something real quick. Here, I'm going to give you this, Pastor Baker. Let's, let's do something real quick, y'all. Um, let's just think about the goodness of the, of the Lord. I'm, I'm like, now I know, right, the song says he's way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light over darkness, my God, that's who you are. But like, we can sing it, right? And we would sound real good, but let's just think about it. And when you grab a hold of your reason, will you just lift your hands and worship him, whatever your reason is? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. What's your reason? Come on. Come on. If you got a reason, will you call out his name? Hallelujah. If you got a reason, will you worship him? Father, you're amazing. Hallelujah. Wonderful counselor. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. Mighty God. Hallelujah. Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. God, we bless you. We honor you, God. Hallelujah. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Father, we thank you. We're thankful today, God, that you choose to make miracles happen in our life. And God, we're, we're grateful that we know that the greatest miracle that we can ever experience, Lord, is you giving your life for us. So for that, Father, we just want to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for allowing your spirit to rest in us, God, and we pray that you continue to stir us. Continue, God, to make your way known unto us, God, that we will lean into what you want and not what we want for us. God, I'm praying today, God, that you will continue to speak to us that you'll continually be made big in our hearts. But Lord, let our affections be pressed, God, pointed towards you. I ask you that as we hear your word today, Lord, will you be glorified in us? God, will you be made big in us, God? Will you help us 
to focus, Lord, on you and what you desire to do in the lives of your people. Father, I pray that you let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, my strength and my redeemer. This prayer and all of our prayers we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, y'all. Can we put our hands together? Celebrate the Lord as you take your seats today. Amen. I want to I wanna take advantage of this moment, y'all, to welcome each of you here to Faith Community Bible Church, where we exist simply, y'all, to make Christ known in the community by caring for the community, y'all. And I am, I am delighted, y'all, to, to be here and worship with y'all. I, like, I was thinking, y'all, how just this past Sunday, it was still summer, but today it's almost winter. Right? It's cold and I feel it in my bones, right? But I'm going to tell you something. Uh, I am glad to be here to worship King Jesus with y'all today. Y'all, we had an amazing time on Friday night um, as we got together, y'all. Um, we, uh, it was interesting. We planned on going to Cornerstone Farms for a bonfire, but it was too muddy. So we just moved things over to the community center, y'all. And I'm going to tell y'all something. Mission accomplished, right? We, we grew that night together, right? It was a bunch of us sitting at tables, right? Kaya was mind blown, right, by some stuff. But it was really good to, to, um, to be together with y'all. And I'm looking for many, many times where we can get together, not only to grow in the gospel, but to, but to grow in relationship with one another. And I'm excited, y'all, about what's to come. I want to remind each of you all, Right, that on next Saturday, October 23rd, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., right, at the North City, uh, not North City, but at the Jennings campus, right, we will have our uh, faith family orientation, that is our membership class, right? If you have not signed up, be sure to do that. You can sign up by going to fcbcstl.com forward slash membership. We want you to sign up so we will know how much food that we need to prepare, right? We're going to have food when you come, right? And we're also going to provide lunch as well as we orient everybody within the faith family, right? Nobody here is taking that class, so it is for everybody. If you cannot make it, um, we will make sure that we schedule it again as there's need, okay? So we want to make sure that you guys are, um, are signing up for that. Also, y'all, um, we initially had a night of worship scheduled for Thursday, October 28th. That has been postponed for now. We will give y'all a date really soon as to when we want to postpone, when we want to schedule that, simply because, y'all, we want to cultivate a culture of prayer and worship together. Amen. Y'all, we are in our series um, Unified through Ephesians, and we have made it up to Ephesians chapter 4. So grab your Bibles and walk with me to Ephesians chapter 4. I'm going to begin reading at verses 1 through 6. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 through 6 is where we will be. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 uh, through 6. I'm glad that somebody's listening to me. Thank you, Jack. All right. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6 is where we will be. Um, when you have it, won't you say, I got it? All right. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse 1. Here it is. I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. That is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. You may take your seats today as the word of the Lord it has added a blessing to us. I want to read this again, y'all, for our hearing pleasure. Ephesians chapter 4, um, verses 1 through 6, Paul says, Therefore, I, a prisoner in the Lord, urge you, I'm begging you, I'm pleading with you um, to walk 
worthy of the calling you have received with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope at your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, uh, one God and father of all who is above all and through all and in all. That is Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6, y'all. And just for a few minutes, if I can, I want to preach from the subject, make it last forever. Make it last forever. Now, as we write, look here um, at Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 6, and those prior, remember, y'all, we really want to stir your hearts through this series to view your life, to view your salvation, to view your relationship with the body of Christ from the context of unity. Hence, the series subject, Unified. Now, here's the reality, y'all. For months, Pastor Baker and I have both been um, driving home the important, um, the, the, the important truth of unity within the body of Christ. It, it, it was so encouraging, y'all, to be able to look up this past Friday to see diversity at the tables in, in our community center. Now, when I'm talking about, Sister Curl, diversity, right, I'm not um, only or not at all referring to racial diversity, right? Because for some reason, when we talk, Brother Duran, about diversity, for some reason, all we talk about is ethnic diversity. There's much more diversity other than ethnic, right? You have upbringing, right? You have um, uh, socioeconomics, so many different things, right? that brings diversity, but it was amazing to look up this past Friday as Pastor Baker and I were standing at the food, we looked out at the people who attended and we said, Pastor Baker, look, it's working. That's, a, that's evidence of fruit, right? Folks who normally, uh, who wouldn't normally connect were connecting. People who would normally be among certain groups were among them. Seeing unity pursued by the body of Christ for really, for your pastors, was really a shot in the arm. It was encouraging to see, right? The lingering question, though, for us as your pastors, right, is how do we maintain this unity? How, how do we, if we know that God is calling us to, to have unity within the body, how do we maintain it? How do we continue to cultivate an environment where unity and community is at the forefront? I mean, after all, this is faith, community, Bible, church. How do we ensure that while we grow in our faith, not neglecting the Bible, living as the church, continue to grow in community? How do we make this last forever? We've come, y'all, to the realization that if we desire for unity to last, it has to not only be the responsibility of your pastors to promote it, but it must also be the responsibility for each and every one of you to pursue it. We cannot continue to, to put um, the importance of unity on our backs and try to carry it on our own, right? Because really, y'all, if I could use, right, Brother Terrell's favorite movie, Drumline, this is one band, one sound. And if we want to see unity, y'all, it, 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 it must come from more than the stage, but it got to come from the seats too. Reality, y'all, is that uh, um, unity is not something that we, can, that we can continue to pursue without your help, right? We all have to work together to be intentional in making unity not only last on a Friday night when it's food and games, but, but what about on Saturday, right? What about uh, Sunday when service is over? What about Monday when you're back to the regular rhythms of your life or Tuesday when your husband or your wife is getting on your nerves or Wednesday when you get a call from the school or, or Thursday, right, when, when there's beef between you and your parents or Friday, your kick it day, right? How, what are you doing to pursue unity in the body on every day of the week? Now, now hear this, right? Let's not get it twisted, right? Yes, should we pursue unity in the universal body of Christ? Absolutely. But can I just be honest with you? The local body is the ones who's responsible for your soul. 
It's interesting, even when we talk about relationship and discipleship, and we say, who are you responsible for and who's responsible for you? Most people begin to name people outside of the local body, not making themselves accountable to the inside. But do you know that if we really want to pursue godly unity, you have to pursue unity with those sitting next to you as well. We have to. Listen, here, here, I want you to know today, y'all, that for unity to last forever, we got, we all, we, capital W, capital E, we, we must remain eager to maintain it. Now, 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 that's, now that's the main point today. Like, I really want y'all to grab that truth today, right? For unity to last forever. Hear this, for unity to last forever, y'all, we must work together. We got to be eager to maintain it, right? And, and in the first three chapters, y'all, um, the first three chapters of Ephesians were very, 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 very expressive, making statements, right? Paul was making statements here, right? Like, God did this. You were this way. You have been and will become this, or you will become that, right? It was exciting, right, to read those first three chapters and look at all the ways we're blessed, blessed by the best. We were able to look at these first three chapters and really begin to see, right, how God has lavished, poured out his grace on us. And it was exciting, right? But these last three chapters, however, right, while the first three chapters were very, very, very expressive, the last three chapters are very, very, very commanding right? Uh, they were very commanding, right? Paul in these last three chapters was making some extremely direct statements, right? God will use these next three chapters to communicate to us some very important truths. Now, now let me tell you, right, uh, I need y'all to hear this today, right? How Paul communicates here in Ephesians is important to us, right? It's important that he, he communicated or expressed some things in the first three chapters that like, like he wasn't passive at all, right? In the next four, he coming direct. He's communicating directly with us. Now, understand this, right? Communication, y'all, is the lifeblood of every relationship. Communication is the lifeblood of every relationship. When open, clear, sensitive communication takes place, the relationship is nurtured. When communication is guarded, hostile, or ineffective, the relationship fails. Listen, I need, I need y'all to understand this, right? Because some of us are in broken relationships, um, not only with one another, but we have broken relationship even with God because we don't communicate. But hear this, communication is the lifeblood of every relationship. When open, clear, sensitive communication takes place, the relationship is nurtured. But when communication is guarded, hostile, or ineffective, the relationship falters. And our relationship with the Lord Jesus is no different, right? Paul ended chapter 3, y'all remember, he ended praying. Remember in chapter 3, he started off praying, got distracted like many of us do, found himself getting right back to praying somewhere around verse 14, ended his prayer, Carleen, in the most powerful way, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that work within us. And then he said, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Then goes into chapter 4, making some commands, right? Wow, the first three chapters are indicative. The last three chapters are imperative. Paul making statements, he, he's going to make statements in these last three chapters like, you need, you need to, you better, I'm urging you, I'm begging you to do this. You need to do that. He's saying this is how to live. See, listen, family, it's extremely true and very important that God has called us, fueled us by his grace to, to, to bless us richly, but that blessings that we get, y'all, the blessings that we receive by the grace of God should also press us right to, uh, hear this, there is no, it's an issue that we find ourselves blessed by God, but the blessings that we receive from the Lord don't press us to holiness. See, the blessings of God are no good for us, y'all, if we can't or don't even desire to live out our salvific call as followers of Jesus. 
what good, y'all, would it be for God to bless us if we don't want to live for him? Like, I, I want you to hear today, right, that being blessed by God and not living for God is a wasted blessing. Being blessed by God and not living for God would be a wasted blessing. But here in chapter 4, right, Paul, as he continues to write to the church at Ephesus, right, uh, he makes a transition, right, from doctrine to duty. The first three chapters was filled with some extremely powerful doctrinal truths, but he transitions here from doctrine to duty, right? Um, let me tell you, right, um, Kale, it's unfortunate that we live in a time, right, where we now find people who love theology more than they love Jesus. It, it's unfortunate that people, right, living out their uh, uh, theology, learning, studying the word that's affecting their brain, but it never affects their heart. It's a problem, right? Let, can, can I just tell you, I don't want to believe in something that affects my thinking but don't affect my living. Right, and Paul says, hey, since, since you are called by God to believe all of this, let me show you how it affects the rhythms of your life. Right, talking about spiritual blessings, the grace of God, he opens chapter 4 with a transitional word, Sister Tracy. He says, therefore. Right, and we, we've heard it before, right? Uh, when you see the word therefore, you got to know what it's there for, right? Therefore, meaning because of these blessings, because of everything that I've already told you in the first three chapters, because of these blessings, because of God's grace, because God is able to do far more abundantly than we can ask or think according to the power, the dunamis power, dynamite power at work within us, he says, I urge you, I, I beg you, I plead to you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called. Now, as Paul transitions from his prayer in chapter 3, uh, he begins in chapter 4. Hear this, Sister Simone, he's talking about our heart posture. He's talking about a heart posture, right? Um, he reminds us, right, about how this walk of following Jesus can be costly and painful but worth it. He reminds us, Sister Danielle, that, 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 that this walk with Jesus, well, it, it, it can be costly, it can be painful, but it can be worth it. Well, what Pastor Mike, I done read, you done read the first six verses twice, right? How, how can I see that it's going to be painful? Watch it. He says, I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord. Now think about this. He reminds us here, Sister Christina, that he's a prisoner for the Lord. Now, I want to mash pause here and let you all know, right, the, uh, like, did you, do you know, do you need to be reminded of the joy that it is of being a prisoner for the Lord? He noticed, right, he didn't say a prisoner by the Lord. He said a prisoner for the Lord, right? What does it mean to be a prisoner for the Lord? It means that we are not our own anymore. We do not belong to the world. Therefore, we don't have to please the world. The world is going to be the world. The church needs to be the church. We do not belong to the world. We do not belong to this earth. We do not even hear this. We don't belong to the church. We belong to Jesus. We are the Lord's peculiar possession. And as a prisoner of the Lord, y'all, being a prisoner for the Lord says that you give up your own rights and grab a hold to his, right? Do you know that, right, Romans 4, talking right to us, says that righteousness has been credited to our account, right? Simply, why? Because we belong to Jesus, right? Hear this, y'all. As a prisoner of the Lord, y'all, we give up our rights. We give up our independent ways and submit ourselves to his will and his kingdom in all things. Can I tell you today that it is a glorious thing to be a prisoner of the Lord for in our bounds, y'all, let me tell you, in our bounds, being a prisoner for the Lord, y'all, we find liberty. Why? Because being in the hands, being handcuffed by God is where his spirit is. And scripture says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Can I tell you only prisoners for the Lord really find real freedom because when you are a prisoner for the Lord, you're actually free. Interesting. It's interesting. 
It's interesting to think about, right? It's interesting to think about, y'all, because we tend to, right, sing. There's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. Then we, we, we get teary-eyed. And then say, I hear the chains falling, but as soon as we hear the chains fall, for some reason, we try, to, we try to weld the chains back together. But Jesus is saying, wait a minute, you're a prisoner for me, not to this world, not to these, these worldly systems, right? But, 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 he, but he's saying, listen, you're a prisoner for the Lord, right? Yes, living for me sometimes may be uncomfortable, sometimes may be difficult, but if you stick to it, it'll be worth it, right? Okay, y'all need scripture. The race is not given to the swift, nor to the strong, but the one who endures to the end, y'all. Let me tell you, as prisoners for the Lord, his spirit works within us to pursue unity, not only with him, but also among other prisoners too. Yeah, let me give y'all an example. Scripture says that at midnight, Paul and Silas began to pray and sing praises unto God, and the other prisoners heard them. It's interesting, right? They got together, Pastor Baker. They was in jail in shackles, right? Uh, uh, the, the folks who arrested them thought they was arresting them for something they did, but they was like, you can put these chains on me all you want to. I'm a prisoner for Jesus. And they started a praise party in prison, so much so that everybody was around them, right? It says that the very foundations were shaking and all the prisoners was loose, right? Uh, the jailer was about to take his own life. They say, no, we ain't going nowhere, dog, but let me tell you about Jesus, right? And the text goes on to say, not only was that jailer saved, but his whole household was saved. Can I tell you that being a prisoner for the Lord really gets us back to really being an example for the Lord. Say, no matter what situation you put me in, you can't stop my praise. No matter what position you put me in, I'm still going to worship God. No matter what position you put me in, I'm still going to lift his name. Why? Because I'm a prisoner for the Lord, he said. Hear this, for unity to last forever, y'all. For unity to last forever. We together, we got to maintain it. We have to be eager to maintain it. But the question is how? How do we maintain unity? Paul, here in these first six verses of chapter four, shows us two commands. If we want to make unity last forever, we want to make unity last, y'all, first. Right, the first thing Paul shows us here, right, is that uh, we got to have, number one, proper behavior. We got to have proper beh behavior. Watch what he says in the first three verses. Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, urge you, I beg you, I, I, I plead with you, right? He, he says to uh, um, walk worthy of the calling you've received with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. That's where walk here in this text, y'all, um, in many places, frequently in the New Testament, is used to refer to our daily conduct. It's used to refer to our behavior. It's used really to point to the character of the blood ball. This word walk, y'all, again, brings us to our English word behavior. And Paul makes it known here that if we desire for unity to last, if we desire to see togetherness among the body, we cannot continue to ignore our character. There's no way that you can want to grow in relationship with somebody else and ignore your own character. Let me tell you, character, y'all, is defined as strength of moral fiber. Y'all, a theologian named A.W. Tozer described character as the excellence of moral beings. The excellence of moral beings, um, as the excellence of gold is, um, is its purity, and the excellence of art is its beauty, so the excellence of man is his character, is what Tozer says. Why does our character matter in pursuing unity? Because we are the ones who are called to live it out. Y'all, it would be unwise for us to think that all the issues that we have in relationships with people are solely all on the other person. It would be, y'all, um, a misappropriation of brain energy to think that every situation that you in is always the other person's fault. And I, and I don't even think we believe that, right? We, we don't even believe that. We just don't put no energy on our side. Well, I know I ain't perfect, but they did this. 
I mean, I got some things I need to change. Downplaying our own selves when it comes, yeah, I, I could have did this better, but he did this and she did that and yada, yada, yada. Let me tell you, do you know it's a waste of energy for you to focus all your energy on why somebody else needs to change when you can't change them, right? I, I, I promise, right? I'm going to tell y'all something, right? Uh, several years ago, right, me and my wife had made a decision. We made a decision that we were separating. We was done. We was done. Pastor Baker meets with us. Uh, I, I, yeah, I was a young knucklehead back then, but Pastor Baker met with us. He said, listen, uh, before y'all make a decision, what I need y'all to do? I need y'all to take the next 30 days. And he said, Mike, I need you to pray. He said, and as you pray, don't pray for God to change Tracy. Pray for God to change you. He said, Tracy, I need you to pray these next 30 days. And as you pray, don't pray for God to change Mike. Pray for God to change you. And he said, we'll come back together in 30 days and we'll see what y'all come up with. Right? So we did what he, I mean, we trusted him. Right? So we did what he said. Before he could even get back, y'all, we, we dropped to our knees begging one another for forgiveness. Right, because we took the time to talk to God and we knew, right, that it was God's desire for us to be unified. That was, right, um, our fourth year of marriage. We celebrate 17 years this January, right? Like, like, what am I saying? What am I getting at, right? It's easy to point the finger at other folks, but sometimes you got to look at yourself. Each of us, y'all, in every relationship, y'all, we have the responsibility to pursue unity. And it begins with us having proper behavior. It begins with us having proper character. And hear this, y'all, a person's character really is the sum of their disposition, their thoughts, their intentions, their desires, and their actions. Now, I'm not saying, right, that one-offs determine your character, but if you keep on doing something, that's who you are. That's who you are. Like, so, so I don't agree with the statement, once a cheater, always a cheater, right? Because I believe that we serve a God who has the power to give you the strength to overcome it. But what I do believe is that, like, once you do something wrong, cheat. Once you do something wrong, steal. Once you do something wrong, cuss somebody out. You, um, as a believer, should, be, should drop to your knees and beg the Lord to not only forgive you, but give you the strength to go to the other person and, and, and adopt a new Christian F word, forgive. He's talking, right, if you want to pursue unity, right, it begins with your character. But the question is, all right, all right, pastor, like, when you talk about character, like, what are you saying? What are you saying? The text shows us some important character traits, and all of them are connected. He says, walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called with all humility, gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. He says, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. See, that helps us right there to know, right, why the body of Christ, both universal and local, have a hard time pursuing unity. Let me tell you, right, we could continue to talk all day about how politics are dividing the body. That's not even it. We, we can talk all day about how preferences on masks or vaccine, right, is, is dividing the body. That's not it, right? What, what causes division more than anything is the simple fact that, y'all, folks not humble no more. Folks don't want to be gentle, right? Everybody want to talk, but don't nobody want to listen, right? Folks, folks ain't got no patience, right? We don't want to burn with one another anymore because we want our way to be known. But hear this, y'all, humility produces gentleness, and when humility and gentleness are partnered together, that's what produces patience, right? Like, like hear this, y'all. Humility, uh-uh, scripture describes humility as meekness, lowliness, and absence of self, right? The Greek word translated humility here in our text, right, places us, uh-uh, in, in, in places like Colossians 3 and elsewhere, it literally means to have lowliness in, low, lowliness in mind. Lowliness in mind, y'all. So, so we have uh, uh, that humility, right? Humility, that means humility is a heart attitude, not necessarily an outward demeanor. 
Like, like humility says, right, that I'm not going to focus um, on my own self and what I want. I ain't going to focus on my promotion, but I want to figure out how I'm going to help my neighbor get lifted. I want to focus more on, like, like, see, humility in the context of relationship when it comes to pursuing unity says, you know what, I know I feel this way, but let me, let me, let me fall back, right, uh, and see and hear the position that the other person is coming from because I could be wrong. But the problem is we never look at things as if we could be wrong. We always look at things as I know I'm right. It means, y'all, that we must kill pride and selfishness in our own heart. All right, y'all need scripture. Come here, um, James chapter 4. I say it all the time. We fight and quarrel because of our own selfish desires. If you think about every argument, every disagreement that you ever had with anybody, it was because you couldn't have your way. That, that's why, right? Do you know, y'all, that the greatest enemy to unity is actually pride it's hard to pursue unity or even maintain unity when all we think about is what's affecting us. It's hard for you to pursue unity when all you think about is you. Am I saying that we should not address how things affect us? That's not what I'm saying at all, right? So don't leave her saying your feelings don't matter. I can't tell you how to feel. Your feelings matter, and there's some validity to it because you feel that way. What I'm saying is that you shouldn't be led by your feelings. Here we go. Yep, I'm getting on a soapbox. Feelings are a great thermostat, but a bad compass, right? Yes, your feelings are real, but you should not be led by them. Believer, we aren't led by our feelings. We're led by the Spirit, right? Relationships are broken because we listen to our feelings more than we listen to the Lord. Like, if you have friends in your life telling you to follow your heart, they ain't your friend. How is it that we want to pursue Jesus, but we follow in our heart something that the Bible calls wicked? You, 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 you can't follow your heart. You, got, you can't follow your, I'm going to tell you something, right? Uh, a couple minutes ago when I first got up and started preaching, Trina, I was cold. Now I'm high. My feelings are all over the place, right? I, I can't follow my feelings because they change with the wind. But I know that if I follow the leading of the Spirit, I'm going to always be where God wants me to be. I'm, I'm not saying, y'all, that we shouldn't address how things affect us or, or, or our feelings don't matter. But what I am saying is that, the, is that pride, in, in case you don't understand what pride is, right? I'm going to give you another word, right? Meism. Pride, meism, focusing so much on I and not we is a cancer to unity. If you focus more on your preference than the other person, let me tell you, you aren't pursuing unity. You're pursuing what you want. Humility must be a part of our character, y'all. Humility actually, y'all, describes for us the character and disposition of Jesus, right? Paul, talking to the church at Philippi in Philippians chapter 2, he says, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being obedient uh, to the point of death, even death on the cross. He humbled himself. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him a name that is above every name. Here's the shouting material, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Okay, you need another scripture. Here it is. God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Hear this. When everything is going our way, y'all, it's easy to demonstrate patience. But the true test of patience comes when what we feel like our rights are violated. Let me tell you, when another car cut you off in traffic, when you got a uh, when you when you treat it unfairly, right? When your coworker derides your faith, some people think y'all they got a right to get upset and face irritations and trials. Well, when I get this way, right? I can say what I want to say when I want to say it. Let me tell you, y'all. There's no way we can consider ourselves to continue to be growing in Christ, and we using words that tear people down and not build them up. Right? Uh, I talk about all the time, right, talking about character. Y'all, it's interesting to me that we live in a time where Christians curse more than the world do. It's interesting. Like, so, so, so you mean to tell me God has the power to change your heart, but he don't have the power to wash your tongue? 
Like, like, no, right? You want to pursue unity? It begins with your character. And do you know that your tongue is a part of it? Right? Paul is echoing her exactly what he told the church at Galatia. He said in Galatians 5 that you can walk, behave, live, conduct yourself according. uh -uh. He said don't uh -uh, behave according to the flesh but according to the spirit. He says that the evidence that the spirit is in you is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And against these things there's no law. What am I saying? To make unity last, y'all, we must have proper behavior. We must maintain a godly character. Well, Pastor Mike, that ain't no fun. Why it seem like uh, everybody else having fun, but, I, but as a believer, I can't. I'm going to tell you something. If living for Jesus ain't fun to you, you don't know Jesus. There's so much joy. In, like, like, I'm going to tell you something. We ain't had no liquor Friday night in the cooler. Like, we had chili, hot dogs, pizza, vegan cheese, vegan chili. I don't know what it tastes like. Ask Keisha. Right? But we had fun. I was like, I got home. I'm like, man, I'm tired. We had fun. Like, let me tell you. You can have fun living for Jesus, right? Allow the Holy Spirit to take over your whole life and redefine for you what fun looks like. You want to pursue unity, it begins with you having proper behavior, number one. Number two, here it is. We want to make unity last. Not only, number one, must we have proper behavior, but number two, second point and final point, here it is. You also got to have proper hope. You got to have proper hope. I want to ask you a question. How often... Do you think about how hope and unity work together? Probably never. Probably never. Simply because, right, what we do is that we pray to the Lord for unity as if it's going to magically appear with no work from us. And I'm going to tell you, that's not the case. Most times, y'all, instead of pursuing unity when it's not present, we run to other places trying to find it only to get to another place and found out unity is very elusive simply because we expect for other people to build it without no help from us. But hear this. If we want to see unity last, right, we must have proper hope. What am I saying? Our hope must not only be in the proper place but also in the proper person. Many times, y'all, uh, 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 to pursue unity, we feel as though we have to compromise the truth for it, and that's not true. Can I tell you, never find yourself in a position where you compromise truth for unity. Truth compromised for unity is not real unity. Right? We hearing a whole lot of stuff, y'all, people talking about, right, being ecumenical. If you define, if you look up the definition of that word and look it up to, and, and, and compare it to scripture, what you will find out is that somebody compromising somewhere. It's not saying that we can't serve our community together. It's not saying, right, that we can't help those who are in need. But what it is saying is that we can never compromise the truth of God only to get pats in the back from other people. Right? Watch what he says in the text. <clears throat> Here it is. Verses 4 through 6, he says, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope at your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. See, Paul here, um, he lists particular areas of oneness or unity, talking about unity in the body, the spirit, hope, Lord, faith, baptism, God and Father. Y'all hear this. He's here in these verses focusing really on the Trinity, the triunity of God, the Spirit in verse 4, the Son in verse 5, and the Father in verse 6. His point here is not to distinguish between the persons of the Godhead, but to emphasize that although they have unique roles, they are completely unified in every aspect of, the, of God's divine nature 
and God's divine plan. Now, although each member of the Godhead has unique roles, they are completely unified, y'all, in, in, in every aspect in, in, uh, of God's nature, uh, God's divine nature and the plan and family. That, l- let me tell you, when we talk about pursuing proper hope, like pursuing uh, or, or pursuing unity, having proper hope means that I'm going to do what's necessary to pursue Jesus because I know that like the only way that I can have proper unity is to have my hope in him. Y'all remember the old song, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. If we want to have unity, our hope must be in Jesus and not other people. Has to be. Y'all, that's why, y'all, we can have confident expectation that God will do just what he said. That's how we know, y'all, that we can be unified and that it can last because every aspect of the triune Godhead, every aspect of the Trinity works together, hear this, the Trinity works together, hear this, to pull us all together to live for and serve Jesus, hear this, together, together. Unity built on anything other than Scripture is standing on shaky foundation. Unity built on anything other than the uh, um, biblical truth is shaky foundation. Paul, y'all, names right here the seven um, basic spiritual realities that unite all believers, right? We're united, y'all. We ought to unite because we're the same body, the body of Christ, in which every believer is a member, placed there at conversion by the Spirit of God. He talks about the Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that indwells each believer, y'all, so that we belong each other in the Lord, y'all. He says we have one hope of our calling, right? I know that when we think about, right, um, this call, right, this hope in our call, right, we're talking about call, right, work, wo- um, uh, um, walk in a manner worthy of the call. We, 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 automatically think that we all have different callings, right? God called me to preach. Did he? Like, you show me in Scripture where somebody was called to preach. God called me to dance ministry. Show me the Scripture, right? Well, 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 Pastor Mike, if he's not talking about calling to ministry, what is he talking about when he say call? When he's talking here about walking in a manner worthy of the call, the only thing that God calls us to is salvation. He calls us to salvation. He calls us to relationship with him. Now, the reality is like, like uh, uh, when we talk about preaching and dancing and all those other different things, right, that's how we, that's how we live it out, right? That's how we build up the body. And we're going to talk about that, right, when we get over, right, to, to Ephesians 4, talking about unity and gifts. But hear this, right? We have one calling, and that's to salvation. And I want you to know the same way that God called you to salvation is the same way he called somebody else, right? We are all called, one hope of your calling, one Lord. This is Jesus Christ who died for us, lived for us, and one day will come for us. Y'all, it's difficult to believe that two believers can claim to obey the same Lord and yet not able to walk together in unity. Somebody asked Gandhi, Gandhi, uh, spiritual leader of India, he said, what is the greatest hindrance to Christianity in India? He said, Christians. <laughs> Acknowledging the lordship of Christ is a giant step towards spiritual unity among his people. He said, one lord, and then he says, one faith. Y'all, there's one settled body of truth deposited by Christ in his church, and that is the faith. And Jude calls it the faith that was delivered unto the saints. Talks about, he says, one baptism. Paul here is discussing the one body, the one baptism. Let me tell you, he was not here talking about filling the baptism pool, baptism. He was talking here, y'all, about baptism of the Spirit, the act of the Spirit when he places the believing sinner into the body of Christ at conversion. This is not, y'all, like, like, let me tell you, being baptized in the Holy Spirit is not an experience after conversion. So, I, I just got to paint this picture, y'all, like, like when he talks about um, um, baptism of the Spirit, it's not something that happens after conversion. So, people who got you going to different rooms after you've already a believer in Acts and you do you want to be filled with the Spirit, taking you to a separate room, say, hold your head back and open your mouth, just like taking a shower, just say, ah, that's not biblical. 
right? You are filled with the Spirit. As a matter of fact, the, the Spirit was in your life way before conversion because you couldn't have even chose God without Him, right? That, that, like, that, like, that's how messed up we are, right? We didn't even know we needed Christ until we already got Him. In fact, that if it was up to us to choose Christ, we would never choose Him because we would choose ourselves every time. But thanks be to God that He didn't think it robbery, right, to fill us with His Spirit and baptize us with His Spirit, y'all. This is not an experience I conversion. It's an experience that every believer has that we should also grow in, pray for, and seek after. It's interesting because he says one spirit, then he says one God and Father. Now Paul just likes to emphasize God as Father. And I was like, why does he keep on telling us God the Father? Paul continues to say that. He said it in Ephesians 1. Right. Verse three. He said it again in verse 17 in chapter one. He said it in chapter two, verse 18. Right. He said it again in Ephesians 3, 14. Right. And we'll see it again when we get to chapter five. Why does Paul keep um, keep repeating to us? Right. That God is the father. Right. Uh, and the only thing I can deduct in my own mind, Emily, is because like I, I quickly forget that God is the father because I want to control stuff. Marvelous oneness of believers in the family of God is evident in that we all are brothers and sisters in Christ. Why? Because we got the same daddy. God is overall and working through all. He's in all. We are children in the same family, loving and serving the same father. So we ought to be able to walk together in unity, just as in an earthly family should. The various members have to give and take in order to keep a loving unity in the home. So God's heavenly family must do the same. wants us to know here that, hey, unity can be maintained. If you're willing to have the proper behavior, if you're willing to check your character, unity can be maintained if your hope is in me, right? Our triune God is the supreme example of unity. God, who is love, has forever existed in a perfect, pure unity as Father, Son, and Spirit. Adam and Eve, y'all, enjoyed peaceful fellowship with God, but their sin brought a great division between them, and God consequently, uh, between, it, it brought division even between us and God. But through the cross, Christ brought us into a loving unity with God. He unified everything under Christ. Let me tell you, do you know that's always been God's plan? Division didn't happen until we brought it. But his, his desire was always for unity. Christian unity, y'all, is the result of God bringing people together from different ethnicities, different backgrounds, different social classes into one family by faith in Christ. The church's unity is already a spiritual reality, but it's not yet fully realized. It's not really yet reflecting the glorious unity of the Trinity to affect that a watching world is compelled to believe the truth of the gospel. Listen, biblical unity will not often be easy or comfortable, but biblical unity will demand that we who are empowered by the Holy Spirit actively live out Colossians 3.14, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. As we respond to the word today, I want to challenge each of us to check our own heart. What is it in your life that's causing division among the body? What preference are you holding on to that's keeping us from really being unified as the body of Christ? What's happening around you that's causing your marriage not to have unity? That's causing your brother-sister relationships, your, your um, sister-to-sister, mama-to-daughter, father-to-son relationship, not to have unity. And I want to challenge you to begin today to make it last forever by having the proper character, by having the proper hope to know that unity can last forever and we all must 
work together and be eager to maintain it. Let's pray. Father, it's so easy for us to find ourselves distracted by what we want and what we think and how we feel things should be. But today, God, I pray that you break us. Break us, God, from wanting our way and may we adopt your way. Break us, God, from selfishness. But let us pursue one another, even those who think different, walk different, talk different, do things different, God, may we have unity. God, I'm asking today that you would reveal to us what's happening in our own heart and in our own life. That unity seems so far away. Let us not point the finger at anybody else. But let us, oh Lord, own our responsibility to get our hearts right. That even as we communicate with one another, Lord, you be magnified. We hear you in your word, God, telling us, urging us through Paul to walk, behave, unworthy of the calling that we've received. We know that we belong to you. But I'm asking you today, God, that will you strengthen us, God, that we will pursue humility that we will all be gentle with one another. Let us be patient. Let us bear with one another in love. Let us, God, by the power of your spirit, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There's one body and one spirit, one hope at our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. We're brothers and sisters, God, and I pray that we will lean into that and not what makes us uncomfortable. Let us lean into you. And God, I pray that if anyone's here that don't know you, will they first unite with you. God, that they will know, Lord, that separation isn't something that they have to be or have to experience, but they can be pulled by your spirit into relationship with you. So strengthen our hearts, God, that we will continue to make your name great. We love you, Father, and we thank you for hearing our prayer. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we respond to the word today, if you're here and you desire prayer in any way, myself and Pastor Baker would love to pray with you. You can stand where you are and we will make our way to you. But we would love to pray with you. If, you, if you're wrestling through, right, any, any particular unity in your own life, we would love, again, to come to you. If you're here in the building, we would love to pray with you. If you're online and, and you um, have some specific ways that we can pray for you and you want to respond that way, go to our website, fcbcstl.com forward slash respond, and you can there fill out um, the connection um, the connection card there and, and that'll come to us and we'll reach out to you to pray with you. You could also respond through giving today. FCBCSTL.com forward slash give is one way. Another way is that as we leave um, in a little bit, there's a black box at our connection station. You can drop your gifts there. But we would love you to be reminded that unity can last forever. But all of us must work together to maintain it. Let's respond at this time. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. We can all just stand, hallelujah, as we sing this last song. Hallelujah, Lord. We put our hearts and our affections on you, Lord. We take this time to examine our hearts, oh God. And Lord, put them in an alignment with you and your word, God. Oh, God, as we just proclaim you, Lord, as our great God. Oh, Lord, we know that you can help in all of these areas, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We continue to say that you are great, oh, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name, oh, God. Hallelujah, Lord. All that we need is in you, God, our way maker. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
All that we need is in you, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, our awesome God. Hallelujah. Oh God, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, everything that we need is in you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, our great big God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Light in the 
today y'all just want to remind y'all about October 23rd if you plan to be there make sure that you sign up for the faith family orientation again you get there's a there's a sign up in the back at the connection station but you can also do it online at fcbcstl.com forward slash membership y'all listen have a great day y'all excited to see y'all again on Wednesday as we continue through first Corinthians God bless you all have a great day